Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you for joining us. We are in Pennsylvania. We're at the Loyal Sock Fire Company, and we're going to be doing a station tour. So let's go take a look. Hello, how Hello. you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I'm Mike from Heroes Next Door. So my name's uh, Matt Hill, I'm a lieutenant here at Lowestock. Glad you guys are here and we're gonna show you around. Yeah, we were pretty excited to come up here. You know, we're coming from Chester County, Pennsylvania, so it's our own state. It's always nice to see, you know, brothers from another station. So as I was driving up, I noticed you got a huge station. Right. You know, I was thinking volunteer station, little, you know, podunk area of yeah. Pennsylvania, but you got a very nice station here. And right. I'm, I'm very excited to take a look. Awesome, awesome. So a little bit about Loyal Sock. The municipality itself, we got about 12,000 residents uh, and about 26 square miles. And we're anywhere from, if you look behind us, like commercial restaurants to, if we go out further in the township, farms, dirt lanes, stuff like that. So we get into just about just about anything here. Awesome. So it's great. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at your house. All right, so this is where the public comes in, right? Yep, so this is where we have a little doorbell. So this is where like, uh, if anybody rings the doorbell, it gets answered in our EMS or fire office. So we come out and meet them here and bring them in the apparatus bay and either show them or answer any questions that they may have. So. Okay. And now just to let my viewers know, this is a volunteer and paid service, right? Correct. A we, are, we are a combination, both fire and EMS. Fire is combination throughout the week during the day, uh, supplemented by volunteers and then our EMS staff. We do have a MICU 24 seven here and then a, a BLS truck through it during the day. Okay. Okay. Nice little foyer area here. This is a, how old is this building? So this new section that we're climbing in, coming up to now was built in 2008. The uh, apparatus bay in the existing was, I believe, in the 1970s. Okay. And this goes up to where? So this goes up to kind of our day room, living area. So we do have a bunk room and rooms for like living because we do have two colleges, uh, Pennsylvania College of Technology and then like Cumming College. Uh, so right now we have three current live-ins. Uh, those vary from a little bit of training in, the, in fire to we have one guy who's a paramedic firefighter. Got, got them all, so. Okay. Oh, wow, this thing's huge. Uh, so up here is kind of our day room. A bunch of couches, big TV, stuff like that. We watch Super Bowl in here, sporting events. The live-ins have access. They have their gaming consoles hooked up to it and all that fun stuff, so. Okay, tell me a little bit more about the live-in program. What is that, how does that work? So our live-in program was started when the new edition was built in uh, 2008. Uh, so essentially we bring kids in or people, doesn't matter how old you are, as long as you have a, either a part or full-time job or you're a full-time student, uh, you essentially get free housing for running calls for us. Okay. That's how that works. Okay. And that's both fire or EMS? Yep. So we have people that come in that are just EMTs, paramedics, they don't have any fire training whatsoever. So they hop on the ambulances or even if it's a fire call, can always have an EMT. So they hop on the fire trucks with us too. Okay. And we also have people that are trained in just fire and no EMS, but. Okay. Now you said you have three live-ins. How, how much more room do you have? Is that? So we have about, I believe 12, 12 rooms. Wow. Till about just before COVID, we had just about all the rooms filled. Once COVID ended, they graduated from the, their college. So they left and now we're starting to build our live-ins back up. So. Okay. Okay. So tell us what you got here. You got a bunch of trophies. So we have a bunch of bunch of trophies, pictures, stuff like that. Do you still do a lot of parades or? We do, we do. So there's a big one down in Hughesville, which is probably like a 25 minute drive or 20 minute drive okay. that we do every single year. There's some over uh, in Williamsport, the Little League Parade, if everyone anyone's familiar with the Little League World Series. Yeah, we do, yeah. We do that and stuff okay. like that, so. Tell our viewers a little bit more about the Williamsport uh, Little League Series. So in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, there's something every August called the Little League World Series. So it's teams from all over the country, like Japan comes and like a bunch of people. So essentially, I think Williamsport met like the area of Williamsport, like 75,000 people. From then, from that like week, it's like up to like 150,000, 200,000, like ESPN's here. It's it's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Our call volume, even like you can, if you like break it down, you can kind of see a little bit of a jump too, which is kind of interesting because all the restaurants and stuff there, a lot of them are in Loyal Sox. So we get, we get to see some, some fun stuff during that time. Okay. And also we go over and help South Williamsport Fire Department, like. Uh, staff and do stuff like that because there's a lot of people like even the anybody can really handle it so right it's uh, yeah because if you're a baseball fan you know about little league right. that's where we all started we right. work our way up and you know when i was going through i come from michigan right i had a chance to come down and play at williamsport and you know play for the world series yeah. too i lost but <laughs> it was right. real fun to, right. to come down and do that so uh, here's here's a kitchen area so this is open for members live-ins anything like that 
Uh, we kind of have a general fridge and stuff like that. And then in that room, we have like a locker for the living so they can have their own food locked away. Right. And stuff like that. Their own fridge, freezer, stuff like that. So. Right. It's a nice little, you know, kitchen area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's something that I didn't expect when I first walked up here. It, it does feel like, like a home. Right. Right. Or like a dorm, at least. Right. We try to make it feel that way. Like we're very open to the, the live-ins and stuff like that. Like I know some places are kind of more like you have to run, make these so many calls a year, these so many hours. We're just like, if you're here and you can run calls, that's something that we know the ambulance or fire truck staff during that time, okay. we're not going to be picky about it. Like, right. Right. We're here for school first, and then if you need to run fire calls, you can run fire calls. That's pretty cool. So yeah. if, if someone's in the area and they're at school mm -hmm. and you know they're starting to watch our videos, we appreciate everybody watching, how would they go ahead and get a hold of you guys to maybe join that program or even just join the firehouse right. or, or EMS station? So anytime during the day, we have, like I said, the paid staff here, unless there's a call, obviously they're not going to be here. So you can literally just stop in here. Our address is 715 Northway Road, Williamsport. So just buzz the door or knock on the door. Somebody lets you in. We also have a website, station18.org. Uh, it has a bunch of information. It has a tab for just live-ins. You can do a general membership application or a live-in application. Now, we're going to be spending the, the day here and the night here, right. so hopefully we can get some calls. Yeah. You have some bunks for us to stay in. Can yeah, we yeah, take yeah. a look at some of those? So we have, like I said, I might, I might have quoted the, the rooms no, 12. We have 12. Yeah. Eight or 10 for like live-ins, and then we have two for the MICU paid staff because they're here overnight. We They have suites and stuff like that. Okay. So we have like two bigger rooms here on the end, and then this is kind of a, an example of little closet bed. Not much, but... It is what you need. I mean, right. you've got a big day room that, that yeah. we're looking at. You have the kitchen area. You know, it's really just your, your private place to, mm -hmm. to lay down. Yeah, you know, that was kind of the thought there. process that I was kind of told about when they designed this is they wanted the kids to really just use the room when they're sleeping. They want them out talking to the other live-ins, not being antisocial and like being part of the fire company because they are like, maybe they're living and they're only going to be here for a year or two. But like the general membership who's been here for 20 years wants to like hang out with them, meet them, run calls with them and like right. kind of bridge the gap between the volunteers. So what and the, would be a benefit of becoming a live-in? A lot of the kids that come, that end up coming here, you kind of ask like, why did you do it? And stuff. Yeah. It's honestly just cost. They don't have to pay for a dorm, pay for rent. It's 100% free. And if you come in with zero training, within the next couple months, we we do free company training. So okay. uh, if you need either essentials in firefighting, if they need help getting an EMT class, if they need any of that stuff. And with the stuff that has costs, like EMT, obviously you have to go through an institution, so you gotta have the cost there. Once you pass your EMT and you come back and start volunteering with we will reimburse you 100%. Okay, cost, so. nice, nice. Okay, so this whole hallway goes down and this has got the 12 different bunk rooms, yep. all very similar except for the ends. Right, yeah, the ends are the two bigger ones and then the okay. other ones are And it looked like we passed, you even have laundry here. Yeah, so yeah, we, so we have an in-house laundry facility. Uh, so they don't have to go to the laundromat or nothing? Nope, nope, they can do everything here, like personal washer. And then we downstairs I'll show you and eventually we have it like a gear dryer and washer and stuff like that, so. Okay. So yeah, up here, pretty much everything they need is upstairs. So over here on the other side of the, the upstairs, we have a quiet room for like studying and stuff like that and also a gym. Yeah, so. yeah. it's good to have that those rooms too because you know, you may be watching the Super Bowl and I don't right. want to you know watch it, which would be ridiculous, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to get away basically right. and having a nice little room like that is important. Yeah, absolutely. And a fitness room. Yeah. So we'll start with the fitness room here. Yeah, so recently they were uh, Planet Fitness moved from a location over on Commerce Park to something a little bit closer to us. So they had some room for some extra equipment, so they gave us some some treadmills, which is nice. That's awesome. Uh, so we have we have a gym here that actually gets used quite a bit now. So. Right. So you you have the Nautilus machines. You also have free weights mm -hmm. and the treadmills. treadmills. Yep. Yeah, everything that you need to stay healthy. Yeah, absolutely. So before we move on, I noticed you have written on your weights here. What is the deal with EMS engine rescue and truck? <laughs> so how, how it was explained to me as one of our uh, our past members, the fire service is full of rivalries like between different companies, different like engine company, truck company, stuff like that. So that was just kind of a, a, a gag or a joke that he wrote those on the weights that if, if you can only do a rescue company weight, you should be doing a truck company weight instead. <laughs> just, just fun stuff like that's, that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. You know, I, keep I the little jazz going. That, yeah. right. And then next to that, you said is a quiet room. Yep, quiet right? room. So kind of like a study lounge like that. I don't think there's anybody. Okay. Oh, and it's got a nice view too. Yeah, yeah. Nice view of every, everything like that. People coming in to do homework, projects, stuff like that. Yep. This is open for anybody, any member. Uh, obviously, it's, got the books it's, here, it's catered more <laughs> towards our live-ins and stuff like that. Okay. But we have a couple like general memberships who are going through nursing and PA program and stuff like that. So that's obviously a high course load. So they come in here a lot and you see them see them using right. it and stuff like that. One of the other things I've seen as we've gone, gone across America is these areas like this, maybe you work from home. You right. know, a lot of people are working from home now. Right. You can actually come here, set up your workstation, do right. your work, and then also help on the volunteer side of it too. Right. We have... 
a couple members who work for like the federal government or county government who work remote all the time now. So if, if it's a day where maybe it's nothing, they don't have any like crazy meetings going on and they want to like ride the fire truck, they can come here and it's a quiet place that they can do their work. But if they get a call, they can always just run downstairs. and hop Yeah. Up. Pretty much all the living stuff is upstairs here. Okay. Uh, I noticed up here on the wall, you got all the helmets. Are these your past chiefs? Yep. Those are all of our, uh, our past chiefs from our founding. In 1925, our first chief, Walter Bells. 1925, okay. Yeah, all the way up to, to present, our current chief, Rich Kachera, who was actually a chief before. He's our, his picture's already up there. He's okay. a two-time chief. Okay. So yeah, we just kind of, these were in the social hall before this, this edition was made, but they brought them up here. And there's a little bit of a, a pun too with uh, Edgar's helmet. You see how it's kind of worn down. Right. There's kind of superstition that if you would rub the helmet, we'd get a structure fire. So that's why it's... <laughs> That's why it's rubbed pretty. So I'll be rubbing that tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's so, right. See what's going on. All right. So that's pretty much it for the second floor on right. this side of the building. Right. Do you mind if we go downstairs and take yeah, a look I'll at the Yeah, I'll take you stuff? downstairs and show you what's down there. All right. So we come down the stairs into the engine bay for a little bit, but then you have the chief's office, right? Yep. A chief's office in our secretary's office. We have a business secretary that's here twice a week. Uh, takes care of like hall rentals, stuff like that. Like membership information if you need a new key card for access and stuff like that. And we have some mailboxes for officers and stuff like that in there. Okay. So on the other side of the house is more stuff. But before we go to see that, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe, hit that notification, smash those like buttons, and share these videos so we can keep bringing you more. We'll come back to this apparatus bay and talk about the equipment in just a little bit. You have two different apparatus bays, but it's separated by this little area here. Tell right. us what's in here. So in here we have uh, like a EMS con ed training room type thing. So we okay. So we do we do fire training in here also, but just kind of a smaller setting other than the social hall. Right. Uh, a little bit kind of get quieter and stuff like that. So we have a thing you can project, and then there's two screens in here for the instructor. Uh, so we do a lot of a lot of con ed and EMS training in here. Yeah, that's a good way to do this, and you probably get you know 25, 30 people in yeah. here yeah. easily. So. Uh, and then across the hallway here is our EMS charting office. So we have the, the office for our uh, like EMS supervisor, and then there's a couple people in there. Can we go right in? Oh uh, yeah, sure, we can go in. So, I'm Mike from Heroes Next Door. How you doing? This is Katie and also, also yeah, Matt. Yeah, we met earlier. <laughs> nice to meet also you. Matt. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you officially. <laughs> so yeah, a couple computers in here for them to be able to chart and stuff like that, so. Yeah, yeah, nice Typical. little area for them to relax and get their charts done. Absolutely, so. absolutely. So, thank you for your service, guys. We appreciate it, so. Keep up the good work, and maybe we'll get a call with you guys. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. And then in there is our EMS supervisor. She okay. has an office in there, and then some EMS supplies and right. stuff like that in there. So it's pretty much divided into EMS on the one side, which is the newer side. Right. And then as we cross over this threshold, it goes into your original building. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yep. So so what we're about to walk through here, this threshold, is where the there was an outside door and then parking lot here. Okay. So in 2008, that was built, and then they kind of... At one point, like everything was packed into this room, so there was like ambulances and fire trucks like this far from each other. So <laughs> right. over there's more EMS than the yeah, fire over here. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, we'll definitely have to come back to this apparatus bay and talk about some of the apparatus, right. whether it's your Mac, looks like you got an incident command unit here, all kinds of stuff in here. So over here we have our emergency operations center, which is obviously used for that at times, but when it's not, which is like 99% of the time, people just go in there, hang out, watch TV, eat their, eat their lunch and stuff like that. Kind of a break room type thing. Okay. Uh, and then in front of that is our radio room. Okay. Every good firehouse has a radio That's room. That's right. All right, nice little radio room. This reminds me of one of the houses we went to in Denver where they have the, the watch desk. Right. This reminds you of the old watch desk. Right. Of the last year, they don't work anymore, but they're, they're still kind of there for the nostalgia. And then this uh, radio room is named after one of our past chiefs, Robert Griggs. So. Okay. And then okay. back there, we kind of have a map of the county, all the different municipalities, and Loyal Suck Township kind of like wraps around the city of Williamsport. So. Okay. So that gives us a better visualization of where we're actually right. at. Obviously, we use like Google Maps and IAR now, but if you need a, you're just bored and trying to learn things, you can kind of see where stuff is. So we'll go through here to the EOC and kind of like break room stuff like that. All right. Yep, EOC. So we have whiteboards and stuff like that for like incident command and stuff like that. A big table. Uh, there's wires that drop down from the ceiling, so if they need to use this for uh, uh, more radios and stuff like that, they can do that as well. Okay. All right. Very cool. Uh, these are our, our our paid staff during the day. We are uh, staffed uh, paid fire 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. So in here's kind of like their office. They have a couple recliners, things to do reports and stuff like that. Okay. Now, you just put two on the truck for paid staff? Oh. Right, so we have, out of out of this station, over in South Williamsport, we have two more paid staff. Okay. So it's, they ride two main engines, and then we have our the chief, okay. which will run, bring a duty officer car. Gotcha. To like, run command and stuff like that. Okay. Well, we don't want to disturb them too much. <laughs> yeah. Can we take a look at the social hall? Yeah, absolutely. 
So through here. Man, this place just keeps going. It's hard. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like Doctor Who's little TARDIS. You know, the, the one you get in and it's much bigger than what you think. Right, it seems like every door you open, there's, there's another vast room once you open it. So in here we do our company monthly meetings, business meetings, stuff like that. And then we also occasionally rent the social hall out. Okay. Can members. you rent it to public or is it just for members? So we're starting to get out of the hole just like members only or like family of members after COVID. So now we're starting to reach out to like more people. Like if anybody from Loyal Sock Township or the area wants to rent the social hall, they can. Okay. And that's just somebody we can. Like birthday parties. Right. Or birthday parties. HOA meetings and stuff like that. Yeah. And it looks like you got a full kitchen. It smells good. It mm -hmm. looks like maybe you're already so, having an event. So these people are actually from the neighboring business, uh, Don Waltman. So they come in here and, and use our kitchen okay. free of charge. So we kind of have like a coat room and like bathrooms and stuff like that. For, right. For, for the social hall specifically. You right. Know? For, so when we do rent the social hall, we'll like open the doors and the people, this is the main way people come in. So. Right. Right. Yep. And to be honest, I mean, this is a great place that you can hold a, you know, bigger class. If you right. get over that 35, you right. know, occupancy for that little room, you can have a big class yeah. in here too. Last weekend we had a ropes class and it was a bigger class. There's quite a few people and obviously you need a little bit more room to do, do rope stuff and stuff like that. So we, we use a social hall. So if they wanted to rent the social hall, mm -hmm. then, and you know, cause that does help with revenue too. Right. So you're, you're a volunteer company. How do they go ahead and, and get a hold of that to, so, to do that? So they would call the station and then either uh, Sharon, our uh, secretary would answer the phone and then she would like take the information and like actually schedule the thing for them. And then I, I believe you can also there's also information on right in the social hall on our website, uh, okay. station18.org. Station18.org, okay. All right, let's go back to the apparatus, but yeah. let's talk about some of these pieces of apparatus. Yeah. So now we're coming back to where we started, which is the EMS side of the apparatus bay, right? Yep. So over here, we have all of our ambulance and like QRS vehicles and stuff like that. This first one here runs first due as our MICU. Uh, so we have an EMT from Loyal Sock and then a paramedic from Schrems uh, that the staff the hospital. Okay. Uh, they provide a paramedic for us. That's a good collaboration to do that. Right. You know, it, it saves a little bit on that finance of employing people. Right. But you get the truck staffed. Right. So this is a 2019 Freightliner uh, M2. We kind of do this because our BLS truck and our first do is smaller, but our MICU runs almost countywide. So that can go anywhere from two minutes down the road to 45 minutes down the road. So okay. that's kind of why we have it in a Freightliner chassis. Right. Over here, we're starting to get into our ambulances or our basic life support trucks. Uh, this is a 2021 Ford. Okay, so looking truck. This runs uh, a second due force. So when the Mickey's out, this will obviously go. Okay. And then how the county here does it is you always get a BLS truck and a paramedic on every single call. No matter if it's a cardiac arrest or like a leg pain, you're okay. gonna get a paramedic and then it's up to us to judge like if we need to recall them or not. So, okay, okay. So. And then behind this, you have a couple of response vehicles. Yes. So behind this, we have our third due ambulances, which is a 2019 okay. Ford. And then we kind of have some smaller. We have the Tahoe is a chief's or command car. Okay. And then the Traverse is like a QRS. Like if it's a cardiac arrest or something, you need manpower to come with you. People will hop in that. Almost like a utility kind of vehicle. Right. Right. At one point, it was a medic truck, but we've gotten away with running the two medics out of here. Okay. So now it's just like QRS, BLS. Okay. So, so before you had a Mickey and a chase car. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. I noticed that you, the board up here, is this how you guys get dispatched? Yes, so we, we use IAR. So when they tone us out through our pagers, we also get a like an alert CAD tone on our phone through IAR. Okay. So we can see, like we can pull up the address, like where we're going on Google Maps. So do you guys, are you allowed to blue light it to the scene then or? So we've gotten away from blue lights, not because like anything in particular happened, it's just a liability aspect at this point anymore. So we don't use blue lights and we are, a, response from home. So primarily, unless you're a chief officer who has a, the duty car, okay. or our chief officers also do have red lights in their vehicle. Pretty much anyone else, lieutenants, captains, come into the station to get a fire truck out. So. Okay, looks like you got a couple of training props up here too. Yep, a uh, couple of vending machines, our oxygen cart, and then a couple of, couple of props and stuff right. like that. Yeah. Yeah, the oxygen cart is important too. That spends a lot of money if you have to farm that out. Right. The fact that you have the ability to fill your own oxygen bottles mm -hmm. makes a big difference too. Yep. Do you share that with any of the other services around? Uh, no, that, not that, everybody can do that. That not so much. Well, I'll show you in a little bit. We do have a mobile air unit, which is a mobile cascade, and that goes everywhere to fill like in-house cascades for like our neighboring departments and stuff like that. And it's on a lot of box cards too. So nice. any structure or something like that, that'll typically go. Okay. Sounds like one of the trucks is coming yeah. back from something. Yeah. So. so now we're getting back into the original original house and what's the first truck we run into? So the first truck here is our engine. It is a 2013 Spartan, uh, 2000 gallon per minute pump, 750 gallons of water, and I believe 30 or 40 gallons of foam, okay. 40 gallons of foam. Maybe we can do a station rigs on this. Would yeah. you be willing to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So you viewers that are watching right now, this is going to be one of our station rigs episode. We're going to go ahead and open all the doors and show you what this truck is all about. And then as we make our way through the back here, 
Yep, so back here we have an antique piece, 41 Mac, more of like a parade and funeral piece and everything like that now, but this catches a lot of eyes of people that come into the station. Yeah, so. absolutely. Now, who's restoring this or is it in the process of being restored? Sort of, it's kind of a work in progress. One of our, one of our members, Alex LeVan, went to Penn College for automotive restoration. So this is kind of his baby. He comes and works on it and tends to it and stuff like that. So very nice. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait till it's completely done, but it looks like it's runnable right now. Right. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Then it looks like you got a little brush truck. Mm -hmm. Back uh, 96 GMC. People kind of make fun of it because it's old, but it, this truck's bulletproof. It'll yeah. go around other trucks that are stuck and <laughs> up mountains. And it's just, it's just crazy what this truck can do. Uh, this, I believe, has 300 gallons of water on it. Okay. It's got like a booster line and all your forestry stuff that you'd imagine would be on it. So nice, nice. And then next to this is? This is 96 Sutphin Rescue. Okay. Kind of a medium duty rescue. Kind of our bread and butter here at Loyal Sock is like vehicle accident rope rescue uh, and stuff like that. So that's primarily what this truck's set up for. Nothing crazy on it. Hydraulic curse tools, stuff like that. Cribbing, okay. uh, stabilization and stuff like that. This has uh, six man air pack seating. All of our trucks have six man air pack seating, except for the tanker. Technically you can fit eight people in that, but we've done that here and there, but it's <laughs> right. not like recommended. <laughs> right, right. And the next that is the? That is a 92 Sutphin. Okay. Uh, both of these trucks we're looking at getting replaced here in the next five, 10 years. So. Right. But still, a 1992 that you're still running and it right. functions pretty well for you? Yeah. That's pretty cool to see. That's yeah. a testimony to how well firemen and EMS and public servants take care of the equipment right. that's given to them. Right. And this truck runs a lot because, like I said, we have our paid staffing during the day. They're primarily taking the engine or the rescue for most of the calls. So like our volunteers are taking this just about every day. Okay. So all of these trucks get run a lot and uh, kind of is a testament to our engineers and like fleet maintenance and stuff like that. that they, they do a really good job for us. So. Right, right. Now in your coverage area, are you mainly hydrated or do you, are you a tanker task force? Right. So it's a little bit, a little bit of both. Uh, within the last 10 years, the hydrants have kind of started to work their way out more. Uh, but we do have a like, probably I'd say, uh, a quarter of our first two is there's no hydrants at all. But like down through town here in the commercial district and stuff like that, we have hydrants every like 400 feet, so it's great. Okay, uh, this is the mobile air service that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our mobile air truck. Uh, it is a 2007, okay. 2000, 2007 uh, Freightliner. Big uh, cascade and air cylinders and stuff in the back that we can fill, we can fill cylinders. Uh, MSA, Scott, whatever we have, they have. So this okay. goes, this goes everywhere. Uh, like second, third alarm and stuff like that. And a couple like working fires, it'll go on to. Right, so. right. And what the public doesn't always understand is we burn through air quite a bit you know, right. with those bottles. Yeah, they're 45 minute bottles, yeah. but depending on your fitness and what job you're doing and that kind of stuff, right. you can burn through that anywhere from 15 minutes yeah. up to a half hour and you're gonna need to be refilled. But a good house fire that's two, three alarms, right. you're spending a couple hours there. Yeah, and, and like we try to fit everything we can on fire trucks and we do like the, the by the, the dually like auction storage, but that can only take so long. If it's a third alarm fire and you're running, each person's going through two or three cylinders, you're gonna run out of cylinders pretty quickly. So right, right. that's where that truck comes in. Now, too. is this also a light vehicle or just? Yep, mainly? so it does have a light tower and it's got some lighting off the sides too. So it kind of air and light, I'd say, yeah. Okay, okay. Next to this, you got a fairly new. Mm -hmm. This is a 2021 Chevy. Uh, 2,500, okay. 3,500. Kind of our, our special unit, fire police, manpower, that sort of thing. It's kind of a vehicle now, of many things. So explain to us a little bit more about what a fire police is. And a lot of our viewers are from other states and stuff like that. What is a fire police? So it's kind of unique to a couple states here in the Northeast is they are called fire police. They don't really have any like arrest powers or anything like that, but they have like uh, powers like, like stop traffic, redirect traffic and like shut down roads and stuff. So essentially what they do is they free up other fire firefighters and like police officers to actually like go to the scene and do their job that way. And pretty much fire police guys, their idea is just to make the scene safe, block traffic and stuff like that. For yeah, us. I so. think this is a very important asset to any fire department right. to have that scene safety. Because all too often we read all the articles of people getting yeah. hit on the roadways, you know, people running through different uh, barricades that we even put up. Mm -hmm. But by having a unit like this really makes a big difference. Right. And then we use this to pull our Gator trailer. Okay. Uh, not sure the year, but it's a John Deere Gator 6x4. Use it for wildfires and then also like technical rescues and stuff like can throw a Stokes basket on you. Okay. As you see. I noticed when we were driving up here, you're kind of surrounded by the mountains. Right. How often do you go up into the mountains to do a rescue of such? Yeah. So like rescue assignments and stuff, usually this and the rescuer do on it up like north of us we have a couple mutual aid partners up there that call us a bunch i'd say probably like five five-ish times a year we're, we're taking this out for a trail rescue or something like that so. nice nice and then the one that i'm really interested in yeah you've got a incident command unit that right. we don't normally see for a fire department right. we see them a lot for police departments or a county-wide yeah. asset 
not necessarily for police. So this is this is a very unique vehicle for us. This is actually part of the North Central Task Force. So we have about, I'd say like 10 or 12 members that are like checked out to fully like take this, drive this to, to calls like and stuff like that. Uh, so like any of like your hostage things, large fires, large crashes and stuff like that, this this will go. And it's got a bunch of equipment and computer equipment inside. We'll, we'll show you here in a little bit. So. Okay, awesome. So for you viewers, once again, we're gonna be doing a complete station rigs on this uh, truck here. Matt, thank you so much Absolutely. for taking us around. No problem. Once again, this was a station Cribs with Loyal Sock in Pennsylvania. Thank you all for watching, but do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification so we can keep bringing you more. And don't forget, we have a new members page. Make sure you hit that join button so you can become part of us and uh, watch some behind the scenes footage. We'll see you again next week. Our it's kind of like uh, Doctor Who's, tor uh, <laughs> you know, little, what is it, tor TARDIS? TARDIS. Yeah, <laughs> I'll do that again.